Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. And in this case, the question is from Leonard von Hugenstein, and he is WB6QAZ, Carol K, KI6TPH, and they live in Cloverdale, California. This is about Parks on the Air, okay? Parks on the Air is a kind of a, a follow-on to where the ARRL did something that was sponsored with the National Park Service. This is greatly expanded, doesn't require any special permissions or anything like that, although I would tell you that if the ranger tells you to do something, you better smile and, and, and do it. A lot of places don't want you pounding stakes into the ground. So, because there's sprinklers and stuff under there. So, you need to be prepared to put up an antenna that will stay up without putting a hole in the ground. So that means a concrete block for the radios or some, something. Lots of different ways of doing it. it. Says, hi Dave, we are working up a portable station for parks on the air and other portable operations. We'll use an FTDX10 transceiver. That's a very nice transceiver. That's one step up from the entry level. And plan to use a Sigma SEHFX80 antenna. We'll put the antenna on a metal pole strapped to the ladder of our Lance 850 camper. Feed point up approximately 15 feet. That antenna is going to want radials. The HFX80 is a 6 meter literally six meters okay so six times three about 18 at 20 feet telescopic aluminum vertical fed through a nine to one ballon and said to not require radials radials can improve anything okay so make sure that the ground side of that is connected to the chassis of the truck that's got the camper on it in our testing it has proven to be fairly good from 80 to six meters it does require a tuner as visoir on some bands exceeds six to one Okay, this is a case where you ought to be using very good quality coax or else a tuner that's remote that can go right at the base of the antenna and then you don't have a transmission line per se. The big losses when you have high SWR come in the transmission line because the same energy bounces back and forth so many times that the current gets quite high. The so-called circulating currents between the antenna and the tuner get quite high and heat the coax. You want to heat the ionosphere, not the coax. Okay, and there it is, the question, what tuner should we use? I'm of the opinion that one mounted remote as close to the antenna feed point would be best. Okay, thus considering the radio we're using, I'm thinking of the RC or RT100. Your review had 20 feet of coax between the tuner and antenna feed point. You can do that. I'd use LMR 400 or RG213. Would like your thoughts and guidance. Why was it that you needed the extended coax? Since we will only be 30 or 40 feet from the antenna feed point, is there any benefit to the remote tuner? Yes, with a 6 to 1 SWR, you'll get much more of your signal on the air than you would otherwise. But now I'm trying to think if the ASU radios will directly control an antenna tuner. The ICOM 7300 has a connection to its remote tuner, but it can be only no more than about 20 to 25 feet away from the radio because it's controlled via a separate cable. It doesn't go through the coax or anything like that. I was for some reason thinking you'd be operating from within the camper but if you're going to be at a picnic table or something like that yeah 20 or 30 feet is probably going to be fine now i would do a lot of experimentation you should use as a counterpoise the chassis of the vehicle which would probably work well the no park service wants you pounding ground rods into the ground First of all, they could damage infrastructure that's under the ground. And second, they're a royal pain to get out. To get an eight-foot ground rod out of the ground, you need something close to an automobile wrecker 
to pull that thing up. It is really hard to get out of the ground. So don't put them in the ground, but you can lay out a counterpoise if you want and use that also. Uh, you don't want anything for people to trip over. You're going to get people asking you questions, what are you doing, and so on. So remember, the point of Parks on the Air is not to hunker down and get thousands of contacts. It's to talk to people who will be in the area about ham radio, make a contact to show them, maybe let them sit down and take the microphone, something like that. Now you're going to need, what is it, 20 contacts, 10 contacts, for the activation to be legitimate for them to accept it for parks on the air. So you've got to also think what you're going to do for logging and so on because POTA wants to log in an electronic format. You can use the N3 FJP software for that that will work quite well. So there you have it. Good luck to you. It sounds like a lot of fun. I would use the best coax you can there or mount it there but understand that now, LDG makes a remote tuner, and quite a few other people make a remote tuner. It has two outputs, one to the antenna and one to your counterpoise system. So, there you have it. If you've enjoyed this channel and, and would like to see us continue on, please go ahead to patreon.com slash ke0og. And if you want to send me a question, send it, as these good folks did, to ask Dave, A S K D A V E, at A R R L dot org, and it will come directly to me. I can answer in a column, in the Ask Dave column, I can answer it this way. Sometimes for some things, just a quick yes or no will answer the question. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.